Man, what is going on, guys? We are back here today on Showdown. This time talking about Agent 00 Trapum, aka Magnezone. You know I had to do a video on this, and this is not a what happened to Pokemon type video. You can tell from the thumbnail this is something far crazier. We're just going to be talking about Magnezone and basically its rise uh, in OU throughout just all the generations it's been here. Um, I realized when I was playing Pokemon just the other day that Magnezone is an incredibly good Pokemon in every generation it's been in. I'm not really going to talk about Gen 4 because I don't play it, but in Gen 5, Gen 6, and Gen 7 OU, Magnezone is extremely good and it's hilarious because it does the same thing in all three of those gens. It traps Steel type and it's funny because it literally traps the same ones too. Ferrothorn in every single gen, Scizor, Skarmory, and then in Gen 7 you have stuff like Celesteela, Kartana, etc, etc. But the thing is, Magnezone is able to stay at such a, you know, top tier threat level in the metagame doing the exact same thing and i was like damn this really is such an amazing pokemon so i figured i'd go through some of my teams in gen 7 gen 6 gen 5 the sets and stuff like that basically give my take on the most effective ways to run magnezone and how magnezone is just so good in uh, all the metagames even though you know it just does the same thing every time so first of all let's look at the most common magnezone sets i'll kind of run through these so specs obviously these are the four moves you're gonna run full switch t-bolt flash cannon hp fire none of these are really up for debate um you know, you got your dual stab here, of course, HP Fire, the tech to Oko Ferrothorn. Excellent. This is basically it. Um, the next set, exact same thing, but Scarf. So the reason you run Scarf is obviously to take care of uh, Kartana, uh, opposing Magnezone, I guess. Specs is better because you're able to Oko Celesteela, which is really important to me. Um, and in some matchups, you need to. You're also able to one-hit KO uh, Mawile, Mega Mawile, if it's not max HP, um, which is really important too uh, with Specs T-Bolt. So that's pretty nice. Um, and so yeah, that's basically the trade-off. While Scarf lets you take on Kartana and I guess just keep up more momentum with Vol Switch. Other than that, we have Assault Vest, which is another set I have used in the past. This one's pretty nice as well because you're able to switch into stuff like uh, Tapu Lele, Moonblast, and Psychic a lot better than you'd think. And it kind of makes Magnezone annoying and pretty hard to kill. So a lot of the times people think, okay, Magnezone trapped my Ferrothorn, but I mean, it's basically dead now. That's all the utility it gets. But something like Assault Vest Magnezone can kind of be annoying for some offensive teams to deal with. It can stick around throughout the majority of a game, which is pretty cool. This set has Mirror Coat teched on uh, in case you take like, I don't know, I don't know uh, in what practicality, but whatever. You take a special move, you Mirror Coat back, and in theory, you know, you get a surprise kill. And then the final set I have is Substitute uh, uh, Electrum Z. So this set got usage. Um... I'd say like halfway through Sun and Moon, uh, when people started using it to take on Mawile and to sub up on Celesteela's Leech Seed and stuff like that. This set is pretty cool. Uh, Electrum Z Thunderbolt lets you beat Mawile with the Sucker Punch Mind Games at plus two, which is pretty cool. Lets you safely remove that threat. Also lets you one hit KO Celesteela if it's Max Bedef, which is awesome. The alternative option to Electrum Z is uh, Steelium Z, which becomes Corkscrew Crash. That's able to one-hit KO Garchomp and Lander's T, which is very cool and definitely an option you can run. I just put Electrum Z because that's the most common option I run. But yeah, so just going through OU, you can see that Magnezone obviously has its uh, sh uh, share of counters and stuff like Chansey, uh, AV Tangrowth and stuff like that. But for the most part, you can see that Magnezone's coverage is actually pretty damn good. So even though, I mean, its main purpose is obviously to trap annoying Steel types, its coverage is pretty damn hard to switch into if you're looking at the Pokemon in, like in OU. Steel Electric Fire coverage is not really resisted by much. Um, I don't think anything really resists that coverage. It's pretty solid. Uh, besides like what, like Lantern and like Camera Up, and those shits don't exist. So in I mean, oh, Swampert's a big one actually. Swampert and Gastron are a big one. Um, but for the most part, this is great coverage, and it's able to break pretty nicely. So even though the thing is slow, um, if you bring Magnezone in on the right turns, it can do a lot more than just trap Pokemon. Like Specs, for example, is really underrated to me, and I felt this way in Gen 6 as well. Because in Gen 6, everybody ran Clefable, Tornadus, and all that stuff, and I was like, you don't even need Magnezone to trap stuff a lot of the time. You can just get off hard-hitting attacks, because people seem to sleep on the fact that Magnezone's special attack is still 130. This thing is still as strong as like shit like Gengar. Uh, regular Latios, like this boy is powerful. So I know, like, like put some respect on Magnezone's name. But anyway, let's look at some Gen 7 OU teams that make use of Magnezone that I've used. So I uh, also realized this, uh, and I brought this up in my OU metagame video. How much ma how much Magnezone I run with fun Pokemon because it allows them to shine. So you can see that with Salamence, Clink Clang, uh, Mamoswine, Beedrill down the line. I had Mamos. I mean, I had uh, Magnezone with all three of these guys. 
uh, because it helps them sweep because steel types in general are really annoying. So on all these teams, um, I had a different tech. So this one was specs because this time it helped me get rid of Celesteela. That's all I needed to do. Just I just needed to get rid of Celesteela because then obviously my SD Venusaur could sweep. My Scarf Greninja is more of a problem. My Mens can obviously sleep. That's all I needed to do. And so, you know, specs worked out great on that set. That's one of the good things I like about Magnezone. You're really able to tech the set for whatever you want, whatever your team really needs. Here, I put Scarf because I needed something that could consistently... Um, take out uh cartana if it's sword stanced up or anything like that and so that was pretty nice for me and in general uh it worked out like i said you only need magnezone really to usually cover one or two roles because you only really need to take on some steel types R very rarely is your team going to be weak to all of the defensive steel types and all of the offensive steel types if that happens you need to fix your team so usually you can tech magnezone to either take care of the offensive steel types i'm talking uh mainly cartana in that sense so if you're trying to take off take on offensive steel types you're going to run scarf and magnezone and you're if you're going to take on defensive steel types aka uh ferrothorn celesteela more effectively you're going to want to run specs and then on what did this i run uh is this scarf too yeah scarf as well but this one had toxic tech so that's basically gen 6 um it's really good on offense but don't sleep it's pretty good on stall as well um but for the most part all my magnezone teams in gen uh 7 are offense so looking at gen 6 in gen 6 this thing is used a lot and i'll tell you exactly why it's because of how good it can be with metagross so these are two teams i used in offense really mature names the hot shit and strong af or as amazing i used both of these teams in tournament so magnezone here with scarf to deal with metagross magnezone is also an amazing partner for metagross because you're able to trap uh the biggest counter which is skarmory i even had thunder punch but it's you know never a bad idea to still trap that pokemon so in general magnezone was able to get rid of ferrothorn and stuff like that help azumarill sweep uh let lottie throw off specs draco stuff like that landers can sweep as well if skarm's taken out so just a really nice crutch for offense this team literally exact same as this one except i switched the stealth rockers and i switched the water type um this team i use this in spl as well a stall team with scarf magnezone and weavile to trap again you can see this team is quite ferrothorn weak but all i have to do is get magnezone in trap that thing get rid of it and yeah i mean what would have been a very uh ferrothorn weak team no longer would have to worry about that and then i can usually outstall the team that's exactly what happened when i played uh my week one spl game using this team my opponent reiku i doubled in magnezone turn one as he doubled into ferrothorn trapped it got rid of it and what would have been a huge threat was out the game and made for a very easy win for me uh let's move on let's see what else i got here Metagastro, this one is again Scarf, this one's Scarf as well. Um, and then in Gen 5, so Gen 5 I might have a little bit more variation as well because in Gen 5 they kind of switch it up. So this one, for example, is Sub Charge Beam. So this is a very uh, old set. This has been around since the beginning of time. Sub up on Ferrothorn, Charge Beam up to plus 6, and then get your second kill because nothing is taking a hit from plus 6 Magnezone. You can run a different uh, number of moves. You can run uh, HP Fire if you want as well. I remember in Smoke on Tour Finals, if anyone saw my video on that, Solon versus Luigi, Luigi had sub Salic Berry uh, Charge Beam, so he got a bunch of boosts, then plus one speed, he was looking like a complete menace. Um, but yeah, so you can also run a couple of things, but this set definitely meant, uh, for the most part, to just trap the Steel type, get some boosts, and then hopefully get a second kill and give you a good enough uh, advantage at that point to just win the game by um, having Mon advantage. So that's a pretty cool set. What else did we have here? Hold on. Magnazone. Um, I believe this one is, yes, this one's cool. So this is Sunny Day. So this set has been used in black and white for a very long time as well. Sunny Day is used basically um, to bring the sun up so you can one-hit KO Ferrothorn with HP Fire thanks to the sun boost. In Generation 5, Hidden Power is base 70 uh, power instead of 60 base power. Um, so the extra little kick means with sun up, you, I think you almost always, I think you always do uh, one-hit KO Ferrothorn. But another reason this is good is um, you're able to change the weather. If your opponent sacks their Tyranitar, Politoed, uh, Nine Tails, whatever. Well, not Nine Tails, obviously, because Sun's already going to be out. But if they sack their Politoed or their Tyranitar, you're able to basically set up weather and negate theirs. The thing is, though, nowadays people are pretty likely to expect this. This tech has been uh, used on a lot of Magnezones. It's not too uncommon anymore. So people know about this, but I like this set as well because you can run Choppleberry. Uh, Chopper Berry is nice because you're able to lift Keldeo's Secret Sword, 1 and KO that shit back with Thunderbolt, which is always cool. You're also able to take Alakazam Focus Blast, just random fighting moves. Magnezone's bulkier than you think. Imagine taking like Terrakion CC or going back with Flash Cannon. So, Chopper Berry in general is a pretty nice tech. Um, you're able to live a lot of fighting type moves uh, with the Berry, thanks to this thing's natural, uh, pretty good defense. So, that's pretty cool as well. And then, other than that, um, I don't think I use Choice too much. Like, I think for the majority. 
Um, yeah, I use Specs, but Scarf I've never used. I believe this one is uh, Chopper. Yep, Sunny Day Thunder Wave. And then other than that, um, yeah, this one's probably Choice, right? Yeah, Specs. Yeah, that's about it. Um, so for the most part, you can see the sets have basically stayed the same. Even in Gen 7, the substitute set, uh, I mean the substitute set obviously existed in Gen 5. It was just sub charge beam back then. Nowadays, it's just Electrium. So even sub stayed true throughout the generations. Like I said, it's very interesting to me how this Pokemon continues to run the exact same sets and do the exact same thing in every single gen and stays at the top of the tier list every single time. It's an amazing Pokemon to me. It's crazy that uh, this is like the only Pokemon that, it's like funny because um, the only other Pokemon that could trap stuff as good as Magnezone or trap steals as well as Magnezone was Dugtrio. And obviously Magnezone's not broken because it only traps steel type, but it's just crazy to me how uh, broken, or not broken, but how powerful Steel type has been over the years. That a Pokemon that's job is basically to just take these guys out, um, stays at the top of OU. But that's basically the video. Just a little analysis on Magnezone. Not sure if I'll do a Magnezone live. Then again, he is an agent, so we'll see. But hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll catch you next time. Peace.